Every time I say cable guide, I, I'm picturing Jim Carrey when he's like, cable? I forget what he says. All right, guys, Johnny Nerd out here. We've got a custom e-bike build. I'm going to go over what we did to this build, what makes this bike awesome. And if you're thinking about doing a build like this, maybe get some ideas for it. Uh, or maybe save you some time. So you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that. So if you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd out. I take bikes, convert them into e-bikes. Um, better bikes than you could buy online or in the store or anything pre-made. When you convert a bike, you spec out everything you want. So you get the right size battery, right powered motor, what kind of display do you want, the gearing ratio, everything is custom. And it's tailored to you and it's way cheaper than buying a, a pre-made e-bike. So you get a better bike that performs better, it's fitted to you, it's lighter, and it's cheaper. So anyways, this is a Fuji touring bike. This bike is made for literally going cross country. You can see it's got the drop bars. It's got the 700 C tires. This thing is built for speed, but it's also got these front and rear racks. You could, you know, keep your camping gear with you, anything you're doing, if you're staying in hotels. But yeah, this has drop bars on it. So we had to do a couple, there's a couple tricks you gotta do with drop bar bikes. And I'm gonna get into that. So we could just start at the front here. This one's got mechanical disc brakes. But with brakes, if you want to use your brake cutoffs, you got to use inline brake cutoff sensors. So which means you just cut a little bit in the cable housing, you put an inline sensor in there, it's just like the gear shift sensor, and then you run your brake cable through there. You got to do them on both sides if you want them both to be active. So that's what we did. We got those installed here. Also with drop bars, mounting a throttle can be a little tricky because you need the standards thin handlebars that they mount on, but when you got drop bars, you got the wrap and it adds thickness to it. This won't go on and it'll be the wrong angle too. Normally you ride like this, so you could access your brakes. So you need a thumb right here, which is right where we put here. So we used a handle bob that creates this thumb throttle at a 90 degree angle. It kind of switches it. So you're able to use your thumb while you're riding and still able to use your brakes. Up top of the display, we went with a T1 display. This is one of the newer, newer kids on the block. It's a very tech heavy display. It's also touch screen. So you don't have to use the thumb, the toggle switch here, but you can use the toggle switch. The one thing I like about this display is it shows you watt hours per mile consumption, which is kind of like on your car, it'll say how many miles per gallon you're averaging. That's what this will say. So you're, it's easy to compute. Okay. Hey, I've been averaging this. This is how much range I can expect. And it's good to just kind of see kind of what you've been doing. I mean, Hey, I've been, I've been pedaling a lot and man, my watt hour per mile is at five. Like that's awesome. Or hey, it's really up high. I better start turning around because my consumption is high. So that's really cool. If you're a data nerd, you're going to really like this. This display and the Egg Rider are the only two displays of, that I know of as of right now that do that, that calculate watt hours per mile. So that's really cool. I really like that. And this is just a nice display anyways. Coming here, we got the Jumbo Shark. This is a 52 volt, 25 amp hour. This is over a kilowatt. This is like 1.3 kilowatts of capacity. So this is, I mean, this is huge. This is like a Toyota Prius battery almost. 80 to 100 miles, probably. I mean, it depends on how fast you're going and how much you're pedaling and your terrain and how much you are. But definitely, I would say to 80 to 100 miles if you're being miserly with the battery. If you're just being full throttle and not going, not pedaling much, you're looking at like 30 to 50 miles, probably. We went with the BBS 02 motor. He wanted it to be very efficient. And the BBS 02 motor is more efficient than the BBS HD. We went with the, the Bafang because he wanted this to be super reliable. You know, you could go, there's other motors out there. In my opinion, Bafang is the most reliable and repairable. So if I was going across country from coast to coast, I would be using a Bafang as well. So his, his thinking was using the BBSA 02 because it's the most efficient, reliable, repairable motor there is. And I agree with that. You've also noticed here that, you know, you get this, this is the uh, gear shift cable. And it's exposed here. And this is what a lot of people have, where it'll come down and it'll hit the motor. You don't want to just let that cable rub your motor because that eventually will work itself a groove in your motor casing. This is a metal cable. So you don't want that. You want to get a cable guide. I, I sell them on my website. You can get them on Amazon even. So there's a cable guide that goes on the motor and then one that goes on the bottom of the bottom bracket. So it kind of creates like a S curve. That keeps your cable from rubbing against components, either your frame or your motor. Uh, we went with the Lecky, the 42 tooth on here. Lecky is a premium chain ring. It has a narrow wide tooth 
offset uh, tooth profile and an offset so it brings a chain line in stock chain rings are just all the same size teeth so it just doesn't grab on as much we put in a gear shift sensor here just cuts power when you're shifting and then allows power to go on as you're as you're riding he wanted to add torque arm a torque arm to this so that it the motor would not move at all generally and you may have seen from the comments and forums and people out there on the internet sometimes their motor will come loose it's it's very rare especially if you torque down that inner lock ring tight enough it's very rare for this motor to come loose he said he doesn't want to it's not worth the risk if he's out there riding and he's uh, he wants everything to just be tight so we proactively put a torque arm on here which just that motor is not going to move it's just it there's no way we torqued it down super tight and now it's got a torque arm that just keeps it locked to the bike frame but yeah you can see this is a cool bike and this is the cool thing about when you buy a bike and you convert it is this is just a cool bike check out the the fenders and the racks and stuff all right let's go do a performance test i'm gonna do a top speed test it's still a little muddy from uh from all the rain we've been getting so i'm not gonna do a hill climb test on the in the grass but let's go do a top speed test You can see this i bet you i could get up faster this was not like a fully charged battery i think it was 34 miles an hour it's not a fully charged battery it's a 52 volt but i think it was like at like 52 or 53 volts fully charged is 58.8 so that five six volts is like an extra 180 watts i bet you i could this will do like 35 36 with more runway too i bet you i could get up to 37 and keep 37 and i know a lot of people are gonna be like there's no need to be going 37 get a motorcycle just because it can go 37 doesn't mean that you are going to be going 37 through you know playgrounds and i don't know where these people are thinking that people are riding that speed but you still have to use your judgment just because your car can go 150 doesn't mean that you're going 150. it's good to know that you have that power to climb a hill for example you're not getting off and you're not going to be walking it it's just good to have that that horsepower even if you don't use it so a lot of people are like oh i don't need 750 watts you might not but when you do need it it's good to have it and it's legal it's if you're in America, that's legal to have 750 watts. But yeah, other than that, I think this is a very nice, clean build. Happy with how it came out. If you guys have any other further questions, go to johnnynerdout.com, book a consultation, check out my shop, check out the forum if you guys got questions, whatever. And you guys see, I always wear my helmet. Safety always. I wear this everywhere I go. I wear this in the shower, grocery shopping, doesn't matter. I totally suggest you do the same. All right, guys. See you later. Okay, I think I'm a little rusty at this. I gotta, I gotta do some more of these.